A reading from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen a star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ child was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea. For this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judea, by no means are you least among the rulers, rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time in which the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me, so that I may too go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary and his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. From the early childhood rhyme, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. To the words of encouragement to reach for the stars, and even the ability to, for a fee, register the name of a star. We seem to have a fascination with the celestial beings of this universe. Perhaps that is with good reason. The distance of stars is often measured in light years. The light from the sun takes eight minutes to get to the Earth. The light from the next closest star takes 4.24 years to reach Earth. In miles, it is 24 quadrillion miles away. How is it that these distant little sparkles in the sky can be pulled close enough to make their way into our hearts. Today we are celebrating Epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany is actually on the 12th day of Christmas, or January 6th. Epiphany is a Greek word meaning manifestation, which is kind of a fancy word meaning the revelation or appearance of something divine at a particular space and time. We Three Kings is a familiar tune with a refrain that echoes our gospel lesson for today. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Just what do we wonder about the star of light over 2,000 years after its first bright shining? Is it still shining? Do we dare to be guided by it into Christ's way of life? Our gospel lesson tells a story about magi who studied the skies and then set out on a journey to follow what they were curious about. The scripture reading is also about the transformation that comes thanks to this new light in the world. We sing, We Three Kings of Orient are, but the Bible never really says that they are kings. Many of our translations today call them wise men, but that doesn't really help us understand either. You see, magi, or stargazers, from several different ethnic groups who read the sky for clues about events on earth. That, of course, is in contrast to how believers would get their answers from the prophets and scripture. The Magi were astrologers who made their living as fortune tellers, far from being kings or wise men that we might look to as reputable sources of information. 
Their practices would have been seen as unacceptable according to the Jewish standards of the day. They didn't do the right kind of work. They didn't worship the right God. And they certainly didn't have the right ethnicity. But they are the ones who saw a bright light in the sky and wanted to check out its meaning. And so that made these outsiders rather unlikely heroes in our first story after Jesus' birth. What are we to make of these outsiders setting out on this journey to find the child who has been born the king of the Jews? I find it interesting that they were the ones searching for this Messiah. We're told in verses 4 and 5 that Herod calls the chief priests and the scribes to inquire where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet Micah. You see, they knew what the news was, and they knew where to find Jesus. The scribes were very educated men. They were called doctors of the law, and they were the keepers of records who interpreted and applied scripture to what was happening in the day. They, along with the chief priests and the elders, made up the 71 members of the Sanhedrin, or the Supreme Jewish Council in Jerusalem. So they knew where the Messiah was to be born. Why didn't they go on the journey to greet him? By many standards, these men, the chief priests and the elders, they did the right kind of work. These men were respected, and they were influential in their community. So why didn't they do something when they had this reputable answer from the prophets? Why weren't they the ones setting out on this journey to worship and honor this child with their gifts? Well, I just don't know. But what I can tell from this irony is that Christ comes not just for one chosen nation, but for all people. In fact, that is what we are celebrating here on Epiphany, the manifestation or the appearance of the divine in space and time. It's Jesus Christ as the light of the world, the whole world, not just as the light to one small group in the world. So from what we know, that Jesus isn't the light only for Good Samaritans, or for only United Methodists, or for only the United States of America, or for only people who have the right kind of job, or the right amount of money, or the right kind of education, or are of the right ethnicity. Jesus is the light for all, for the poor, for the homeless, for girls and for boys, for immigrants, for gender nonconforming folks, for the jobless, for the mentally ill, for the people in Africa and for the people in Iraq. Jesus is the light for you and for me. The light is there, it is here. Oh, but if we just have the faith of those outsider magicians to gaze at the stars and recognize a bright one when we see it, and then have the curiosity enough to set out on a journey to find out what that light is all about. This light came during quite a bit of darkness in the world. The prophet Isaiah said, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. In the gospel lesson, Matthew positions Herod as a frightened and jealous king who couldn't stand the threat of a new king, so he asked the Magi to let him know where they find this Messiah. Well, later in the chapter, Herod realizes that the Magi went home by another road instead of reporting back to him like he had asked. This increased this threat that he was feeling, so he ordered all children killed in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or younger. This is the kind of darkness present in the world during the time of Jesus' birth. Yet it is the same kind of darkness we see in the world today. There are still jealous religious and political leaders seeking sovereignty in the world while plotting in nasty ways to undermine whoever it is that gets in their way. We turn yet again to the Magi. 
the outsider magicians with unrespectable professions to see what they do. Well, they have a choice to make. Have they been consumed by the darkness, or do they choose to live in the light? Well, they find the place where the child was, and we're told that they were overwhelmed with joy. They knelt down and paid in homage. Then they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, gifts at the time traditionally acknowledged who this child was. The gold would have represented kingship, frankincense for divinity, and myrrh for humanity. These gifts were given by the Magi in recognition of who this child was born into this world. The outsiders recognized the Messiah, and in return they received great joy. Through that joy, they began to see another way of life. They began to see the choices available to them and followed the wisdom in their dream to go home by another way instead of becoming willing players in Herod's dark plot. One of my favorite poets is Maddie Stepanek. He is a young boy who struggled with a rare form of muscular dystrophy until his death in 2004. But his struggles did not keep him from seeing light and hope in this world. I'd like to share with you his poem entitled, The Way Home. Sometimes the way home is love. Sometimes the way home is together. And sometimes the way home is not just love, but loving each other. And sometimes the way home is not just together, but together with other people. People you love a lot, people you like a lot, and people you are friends with. But all of the time, the way home is every good thing that God told us to do. The light is still shining today. We Christians are called to be bearers of the light of Christ for all nations we are called to bring justice for all, to give deliverance to the needy, and to give voice to the voiceless in the midst of the darkness of this world. We are called to gaze at the stars and to follow where they lead us. We are called to demonstrate our joy in the choices we make and in the gifts we bring. We are called to worship, and we are called to make choices to turn our back on the dark plots we are asked to support and instead to have the courage to return home in the light by another way. Such are the lessons from an unlikely bunch of stargazing outsiders some 2,000 years ago. Such are the lessons for us today. Amen.